It's the Emissary Authors Podcast, where we interview faith-based founders, executives, and entrepreneurs who have messages that have the potential to change the world, and we help them tell the stories that matter. My name is Paul Edwards, and this is my co-host, my partner in crime, Jason Todd. And Jason, we have got uh, a guest that um, proportionally we both go way back with, you by about 10 minutes and me by about 10 years. Uh, and a uh, nine-time published author, uh, and his book is called Winning the Day, Jose Escobar, an old friend of mine who is the founder of the Connected Leaders Academy, is joining us today. Jose, welcome to the podcast. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, I've been excited to get to know you for the past now 12 minutes. Uh, it's, it's really been a pleasure because I know that you've got a, an, an interesting journey from where you were maybe 10 years ago to where you are today. And I know that many people who embark on this journey of starting a business or authoring a book have similar dreams. And so we want to not only dig into your book, but also hear about your journey and how you got to where you're at. So uh, let's catch maybe people up to speed. You guys know each other now yeah. for a decade. Where'd that journey begin? In, the, uh, in sunny Orlando, Florida. <laughs> One As all day, good journeys should begin. <laughs> one day by a, sitting by a poolside in, uh, what was it? Was it a Holiday Inn or something like that where they, they, kept, they kept us? Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> it wasn't quite five star, but it was like a solid two and a half star. Something like that. <laughs> yep. Yep. We were, we were rookie agents at Liberty Mutual. Uh, we were in training. Um, and uh, we, got off to a, we got off to an interesting start, but it's a conversation that has not stopped for... Uh, for 11 years now. So proud to know you and, and, and I'll stop talking now so you can start sharing your side of the story. Yeah, no, I, I share a, a very similar memory. We were poolside. We had some deep, uh, roots on the tree kind of conversations that most people don't have. Most people talk on the branches and very superficial. We were talking more on a lot of important topics like faith and family and fitness and nutrition and you name it. And um, yeah, you shed some really good information to me and I was like, well, this, this guy is a, a mover and shaker. He's thinking on a different level, different wavelength. And, and I really enjoyed it. We connected and we've been friends ever since and have kept in contact and I'm uh, just uh, grateful for that relationship. Yeah. It, it's interesting because before the broadcast, we were also talking about where you're at today now, Jose, where you've now, uh, published what nine books. Correct. And a lot of that was done in coordination with other folks, which it's, I think when we look at some of these journeys, so much of our success is related to who we align ourselves with. And I love what you're, how you, how you term it, you, uh, the roots on the tree sort of conversation. Yeah. So, so initially I wrote my first book, uh, winning the day an entrepreneur's guide to morning and evening routine mastery, which is all about the bookends of your day, right? How you start your day how you end your day, what are all the moving parts to high performance and productivity to ultimately improve your life personally and professionally, right? I emphasize on, on 10 life domains, which the latest research goes down to nine based on uh, Michael Hyatt's your best year ever. Uh, he just came out with the expanded updated edition, which took 10 domains to nine now, which I'm like, okay, well, there's that. So, um, I love it. And I, I wrote my own book. I'm a common placer. Uh, somebody has been doing that for many years which is really just storing information on three by five index cards and, you know, filing it away for future reference. And I use those types of things like quotes and poems and facts and ideas and concepts and you name it from magazines and YouTube videos and podcasts and coaching calls and all kinds of great things. And, and, and I've uh, pretty much put a book together um, that I've taken information that I've learned over the years from people like Robin Sharma, Hal Elrod, Ryan Holiday. Robert Greene, I mean, all these amazing uh, giants in, in that space. And this is the book you're actually right behind me. It's um, a really cool uh, work that I put together, which I really enjoy. And then from there, I said, well, since I'm on this writing kick, I enjoyed it. So let me co-author some, some books with some influencers out there that have, you know, huge audiences and have fancy titles like international bestseller. And I said, let me just leverage that and access that and what I've done is I went from being a best-selling author to now I say I'm a nine-time award-winning best-selling published author. It just sounds better. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What is it about, I'm curious, what is it about your personality that 
makes it easy for you to connect with these folks that I think some people look at as being out of reach? Um, I, I think, uh, for me, it's more about, um, them versus me. Like what I do is I'm like a chameleon, right? I can adapt to any room with anybody and understand the type of personality they have. And I will just mirror them in sales, right? It's all about mirroring, right? So you mirror, if they're up here, I'm up here. If they're down here, I can be down here too. I can go anywhere they go and I just focus on them, right? How to win friends and influence people. And I ask them questions about them. I find a hot button, right? Form, which is family, occupation, recreation message. And I kind of go through this flow when I'm talking to people and I make it about them. And as soon as I find something in there on the recreation side that we can talk about and both connect on, I will just go in and, and, and drill in on that. And that's how I build relationships. And I've been doing that for uh, close to two decades. And uh, my circle is massive. I know easily over 10,000 people on a first name basis. That I've, I'm just a networker. I'm a connector, and I even launched a business off of that concept called Connected Leaders Academy, and that's kind of like my my core product, if you will. But yeah, it's all about relationships and knowing how to talk to people and making sure it's everything's about them, and then by default, they just like you are. Yeah, yeah. That's been that's been uh, an incredible journey to watch, um, Jose, because of course you know I was on a on a somewhat similar path, but never never in the sense of building a business out of it. I just used networking and relationship building for whatever business I've been in. But then to see you turn that into the, the, um, you know, global movement that you have, and now people are, you know, coming to your events and you're speaking at all these places and you've put, you know, helped to publish all these books. I can see so much of the power of what I've talked about in my books and the things that I learned, uh, the things that we were both learning, I guess, probably in the, in the days when we were at Liberty. So, but, but I want to go back just again to the foundations of this and say, you know, what happened to you? Because I remember, you know, we were, we were at Liberty, then you went somewhere else. And yeah. for a while you were doing a lot of like interstate traveling. You were working very much, and I think it was with the, something with the, related to the martial arts industry. That's correct. And what did, what did you see? What were like some of the common things that you saw as you did that over and over and over again? And you began to say to yourself, uh, maybe like in some ways, like I did with some of the things that I used to do for networking, you know, this, this is value and it could be monetized and I could take it, I could package it into something that people could would want and would pay for and would want access to. Yeah. So, uh, I, I have been, uh, for a long time, like I said, I, I've been a professional seat warmer for 20 years, maybe longer mm -hmm. going to all kinds of events. I have been, um, just investing in, in coaches and mentors, uh, courses and programs, you know, boot camps high ticket masterminds, uh, conventions, summits, seminars, uh, webinars. I mean, uh, the list goes on. I think a lot of us have, right. And that's kind of what has positioned me to be around all these different people. And as I started, uh, meeting all these people, both from my own investing in myself, which Warren Buffett says it wonderfully, he says the greatest investment one can make is an investment in themselves. I'm not afraid to do it. I've been doing it forever. So I said, well, uh, then my job, my, I was a sales director for a global martial arts company. So I was overseeing the U S territory and anything and everything sales. And, uh, I would travel the country on their dime. And I got to book a lot of celebrity keynote speakers for martial arts conventions, people like Gary Vaynerchuk, Chuck Norris, Boss Rudin. It was like a dream job, good pay, free travel, uh, drinks and cocktails and steaks and meeting all kinds of celebrities. And I was in the industry that I loved, right? Mm -hmm. I had four things that I loved sales, networking, coaching, martial arts. I said, this is perfect. The problem was I was, uh, helping other martial arts school owners as a consultant, helping them become millionaires, but my income was the same. So they were here over time and I was still here yeah. and I, and there is a disconnect, right? So I said, it's time for me to do something for myself because when you start making more money in a day than you make in six months, you know, it's like, there's a problem, you know? So it was actually costing me money to work there. So that's when I decided to kind of transition and go full time in my business. But. Uh, what initially sparked that idea of like launching a business from everything that I was doing was I said, you know what, since I was a little kid, I was a galvanizer, right? I was the one who would bring my brothers to the table to play a board game with my parents, right? Mm -hmm. I was the one who suggested family movie night. 
in recess in elementary school, I was the one who would bring all the kids to the courtyard to play basketball. And I would organize the teams and set people apart. And I was always a leader and I was always a galvanizer and I was always the, the networker, the guy who was the relationships guy. Right. Yeah. And then from there I said, okay, well, as I look back in time, all the stuff that I was good at and what I really love doing is bringing people together, leading and selling. Right. And then I said, well, okay. So I know thousands of people. They all know me. They don't know each other. So if I can just put everybody under one roof, charge a small fee to bring entrepreneurs together for five reasons. So they can grow personally and professionally, so they can scale their influence, so they can move the needle in their business, more money, more clients, more referrals, more leads, you name it. Um, they can develop their skill sets because we're all working on something, right? We're iron sharpens iron. And number <laughs> five, to grow their circle, their network in a more intentional, exponential way where they get real ROI, right? So I said, if I can just do that, I would get a recurring revenue Everybody else is happy. I don't have to be the John Maxwell or Tony Robbins. I'm just a guy who created the space, right? And that took off. And we're over 355 paid members now in 44 states across the U.S. and 18 countries. Yeah. And we're just getting started. But that's kind of a little bit of where I was and why I decided to go into it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love how you, I love how you, was it, you were able to look at all those things and bring it all together. And it's. It, all, it sounds very familiar. Jason, you had a, you had something to say there. <laughs> yeah. You, you make it sound so simple and <laughs> because uh, those, of us, <laughs> those of us who have built businesses, uh, we know that it's not. So walk us through that, walk us through the, maybe the tumultuous process or maybe the simple process that you experienced and relate that then to maybe a, a listener who is thinking about writing a book, thinking about the same thing you're talking about, like what, how, how am I spending my time and what is that costing me? That opportunity cost and something's got to change. Walk yeah. us through that transitionary period. Opportunity cost is massive. Like those two words together, it's just like mind boggling what it, it may cost you. So yes. Um, so Jason, to answer your question specifically, first of all, I got to say first that I believe it is simple, right? It's not easy. There's a difference between easy and simple. It's a very simple thing. I'm the kind of guy who jumps off of a plane and figures out how to land. I'll throw mud on the wall and see what sticks. And I will constantly course correct and, and tweak and adjust along the way, right? I'm a massive action kind of guy. So for people out there who are overthinking, overcomplicating, or getting in their head, remember you are your own problem, right? If you just go out of your own way and say, how can I simplify this enough so that I can just take that necessary step to take action, right? And not just action, massive action. I always reference this book, uh, chapter eight, thinking grow rich on decision, right? We have to be executive decision makers and we got to be able to move quick and fast and efficiently. So what I said, when I launched this, this organization called Connect the Leaders Academy exactly two years ago, as of January 15th. So very recently, uh, two years ago, um, uh, I, it took me two weeks to create the idea in my mind, right? Everything starts in the mind, right? Everything yeah. is created twice, first in the mind then in the physical plane. So I created it in the mind. And then I wrote it on paper because the goal is not a goal until it's written down, right? So I said, let me set some goals and create a plan. I started mind mapping on the, on the, on a whiteboard of what it looks like and all these ideas. And I started kind of cutting and chopping and, and trimming and like, uh, like the bonsai tree and karate kid. Right. And then I started looking at it, started becoming more crystal clear. And it took me two weeks to create a name uh, of the, of my company. I said, well, I want to bring people together connected. I want entrepreneurs, typically they're leaders. I want um, to have a hub where they can learn and grow and be better. Academy, Connected Leaders Academy. Ooh, genius, right? So I said, I put that together. And then from there, I said, okay, well, I need a logo like this one here where they're shaking hands, light bulbs here, connection, like the whole thing. So I, I got a logo on Fiverr for $10. And then I secured the .com to make sure it was available. So I got that. Then I said, okay, well, what am I going to offer? So I said, I like the number 10. Let me offer 10 benefits. It just sounds like appropriate, right? I had nobody telling me how to do this. I just figured it out. Right. And then I said, I have 10 benefits. Okay. So now that I know the features, I know the benefits, what am I going to charge? So then I said, let me charge a founding members rate for the first, you know, 50 people who join. And then I said, from there, we'll increase the price. And I created this like idea of what it's going to look like. And then in two weeks time, I had a business that I just started opening my mouth. I said, okay, I have nothing to show anybody. This didn't exist until six months in. I didn't have anything fancy. I just had a name. I had a logo and I had my ability to open my mouth and take action. Right. So I said, okay, guys, listen, 
coming soon. People started saying, what is that? I'm glad you asked. Let's jump sure. on a virtual coffee and have a conversation. So we jump on a virtual coffee and I said, hey, this is the vision of what I'm doing. And again, I have the ability to paint a vision, right? And people want to be associated to mission, vision, and all those things, right? So I said, listen, imagine this. My vision is a hundred, a million entrepreneurs all over the world in over a hundred countries. And we're supporting each other. We have this tribe, a family of people that are going to support each other, where we look at each other through the lens of how can I serve you versus what can I sell you? And we're going to support each other and encourage each other to be better. And I'm going to bring the best of the best in here. And we're going to then serve our clients better because we're becoming better entrepreneurs. And as we serve our clients better, the world becomes a better place. Don't you want to be a part of a movement like that? Hmm. You know, and I was just doing that. And sure enough, yes, 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 yes. And in 30 days, I had a hundred people join my community. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I remember, I remember that. I remember watching that and I was like, you know, <laughs> I had a feeling just because of, um, all that travel and all those years and all that, you know, networking and meeting people and that you had done, I was like, well, if, if there's somebody who has spent, you know, more than 10,000 hours in the saddle, it's, it's Jose. Yeah. And people don't see that though. They don't right. see that. They don't see the, the thousands of dollars, easily over a hundred thousand dollars of things that I've gone to, to learn all the books that I've read all the time, all the sleepless nights. Right. They don't see all that. All they see is, oh my gosh, was they got lucky. He's, he pulled on something. And yeah, uh, yes, it was two weeks. And yes, I was fast. And yes, it was not complicated. But the cool thing and the reason why I tell people all the time is I did it with no money. Yeah. Right. I did it with, um, with no coaching of any kind of how to do it. I just said, I just had this idea. I said, let me give it a shot and see what happens. Right. And I did it in such a quick amount of time without overthinking. And I have zero employees. I don't have a physical brick and mortar. This is my whole office right here. I'm in right now. Right. And, and that's the power of just taking action and, and you tweak and adjust. And have I tweaked and adjusted along the way? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. That's just, uh, sometimes it's amazing how many ideas and businesses and, and books that are out there that are not even started yet that you can, anybody can do right now today. And it's just, we just stop ourselves because we think we need all these things. The seven figures I just talked about, who cares about the money? The money is just a, is a direct uh, correlation to how much impact I'm creating, right? That's sure, all it yeah. is. So, uh, the way I see it, it, I did it with no website, right? And everything I did, I did it with no website, zero paid ads, zero dollars in marketing budget. I had no money to build this thing. Um, no automation, no AI, no funnels, no email lists or email marketing campaigns. Everything I built was organic, 100% word of mouth. So yeah. I'm telling people out there, you can do whatever it is you set out you want to do in business, right? Today, now, just start it. Why wait? Yeah. So, so like, let's dig in a little bit on, on what you tell people to do in your book specifically, Jose, because what I want, <clears throat> what I would want to know if I was somebody listening to this and I was, you know, I have this dream of, oh, maybe I could start a business one day. You know, you talk about a morning and evening routine and a lot of people can have, can start to get pictures in their minds. And I think what you're talking about is more, um, more based in, in principles rather than tactics. So before people start thinking that, um, you know, they got to do X, Y, Z as it's laid out and in this, this person's routine, what do you teach people that would form a good foundation for them to pursue a dream like this? using morning and evening routine mastery. Yeah. So that is the, like the, the secret sauce behind the sauce, right? So that's like the thing that I, that's where I started. So back in 2019, I tested it out for a whole year, right? So I tested out in my own life to see, Hey, if I just actually apply all these things I've learned from all these amazing people, maybe something will happen in my life, right? So I, <laughs> let me just start. So I committed to a year. I told my wife in 2018, December 31st, I said, listen, I'm going to commit for all of 2019 to, uh, commit to a morning routine and an evening routine. I'm going to just apply everything I've ever learned into a year. And then I'm going to take that year as my foundation for launching something to teach other people how to do what I did. Right. Mm -hmm. so that's what I did. And then in that, you know, time frame, I lost 36 pounds that year. Uh, my spiritual life went to an all time high. I became a better father, a better husband. I started reading a book a week. At, at that point I was reading like 
maybe three books a year. Uh, uh, intellectually, I was on a whole nother level. Emotionally, I was way more stable. I used to be like this all the time, right? Um, and I got out of debt. I doubled my income. I launched a business at the time. My first business actually was a social media marketing agency that I learned from Ty Lopez because I was coached in his, in his group. And, um, and that was doing well. It started doing really well. It was called backlash marketing. I was catering to restaurants and bars and helping them with their social media. And then, uh, COVID pretty much. I remember it. that. Yep. You know, you know, and that's kind of where, where the whole thing started. So then I said, well, I have this amazing thing that I did in my life in one year, I can take this, all the things that I learned that I did, and I could turn it into an eight week program and I could charge high ticket and they're going to do group coaching with me and I created all these modules and I filmed myself on Google, uh, Google, um, I'm sorry, I filmed myself on zoom, right. And I created a Google slide like PowerPoints mm -hmm. and, uh, no fancy lighting, no green screen no nothing. And I just basically was like regurgitating what was on the, the things that I wrote and I was just talking about all these different things, 35 different things on, you know, uh, visualization, affirmations, uh, nutrition, fitness. Um, journaling, contemplating, effective reading. When I say effective reading, I mean, like all the books that I read are well-read books. I always say it's not about how many books, you know, you get through. It's about how many books get through to you. Right. So I have my own index and every single book that I read that has my own index on the things that I, that I care about. I have, as you can see, dog ears, uh, circling, highlighting, marginalia everywhere. Uh, sticky notes and all these, so all the books that I read, I do that. And then I have a section of rereads and I have a section of just reads for one time, but I can always go and reference the most important points. So if I go here and I look at my index, it says something, um, like for example, page 53, voluntary discomfort, referencing Epictetus. So I can just go there and, and they, these, all these points that are here are then put into my, uh, comment placing three by five minutes card system categorized by categories, right? So I have a whole process of how I do it. So I teach people 35 different moving parts of what you could be doing in a morning routine and an evening routine on the bookends of your day. Uh, some of the things you do twice a day, right? Like read, I read on the front end and the back end yeah. some, or like once a day, like my workout in the morning. So I go into what is it? How do you do it? And why is it important for all these different things? That program, I started at a thousand dollars when I first started because I didn't have the confidence level to charge more. That very same program has increased in price five times. It's now a $10,000 program. Hmm. In eight weeks, people walk out with their own customized morning and evening routine of based on everything that they learn. So I said, let me take that program and put some secret sauce in here. A lot of the good stuff that's in here, somebody could read this book and walk away and change your life just by yeah. reading this book. But if you want to really go to the next level, then this is more of a, almost like a, a, a lead magnet to essentially get people into my program. Mm -hmm. but at the end, what do I do? I invite them to say, Hey, if you want to take this to a whole nother level, you can work with me. Right. And we can have a conversation about that. So, but what I recommend in a nutshell, really quick is very simple. Start small. Small, simple steps. Jim Quick talks about it in Limitless, uh, Atomic Habits. James Clear talks about it. Small, simple steps, start where you are, but you got to start, right? You don't need to do three hours in the morning. Like I do, I wake up at 4 a.m. and until 7 a.m. That's my morning routine. You don't need to do that. I built that up since 2019. You can yeah. do 30 minutes in the morning, yeah, 10 minutes at night, but just include the most important things, right? Mind, body, spirit, right? At least do that. And then yeah. enough of that, that's what I would say. Wow. Yeah. And so like, if someone is, um, someone's thinking about launching a business or perhaps writing a book, right. And, and spreading a message, um, that they know, believe can change the world. Um, same thing is going to happen, right? There's going to need to be a series of things that they do to be able to do it consistently over the long haul, uh, to keep showing up. And I think that, um, <clears throat> part of the reason a lot of people don't make it that far um, doesn't have as much to do with availability or lack of avail availability of funds so much as it is a resourcefulness based on, um, clearly apprehending what is the vision I'm after? And then what is the routine I need to follow day in and day out to get there? There are a couple of things, uh, off of what you just said. First of all, you have to have mental toughness. 
right? It's really hard to build a business and to be successful in life, and let alone business, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have mental toughness, you also need to have discipline. You got to have the ability to force yourself to do things, whether you feel like it or not. So many people are led by how they feel. I say, forget how you feel. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger said in the morning, I never ask myself, how do I feel? I don't ask myself, am I in the mood to go to the gym? He says in the first thing in the morning, I don't think. I just yeah. put on my shoes and I go, I don't think. So too many people think too much and they get led by their feelings and that leads them down a slippery slope. And again, mental toughness, discipline, consistency. You have to have the ability to, to do this thing over and over and over. And so many people fail along the way because they don't fail forward, right? They fail and they, and the only reason it's the only way it's failure is if you don't walk away with takeaway and you learn something from it. And if you don't get bounced back from it, right? You yeah. gotta have that bounce back ability, right? So, um, I always tell people all the time, I forget where I, where I heard this, but somebody, uh, uh, somebody, a mentor of mine at some point said, you know, it's people think that, oh, I'm doing my business. It's not working. It is always working. It is always, always, always working. It's either working for you because your business is growing or it's working on you, right? It's working yeah. on you to make you more tenacious, to get you more perseverance, to make you mentally tough, to give you more discipline, to give you that consistency, to give you the edge, to, to give you all these things that you don't have, right? Because I yeah. know the Lord won't give you what you're not ready for, right? So it's working on you, right? And eventually it'll work for you, but it's always working. And yeah. Sometimes people are looking at their bank account or they're looking at the results and they're not focused on the work, right? People want all the time to like, you know, get that, uh, they want to get that, uh, that extra money, right? But they're constantly looking at how much work do I have to put into it? You know, and, and the reality is that's why the majority of people are not entrepreneurs. Yeah. Right. Because, because if, if they don't have a boss, they start. They need somebody to tell them what to do. So as an entrepreneur, if you're going to step into that world, you got to have the ability to have that, all these, these things that again, is not, we don't, we're not born with it. We got to develop it like a muscle, right? It's just. Mm. What I hear from all of this is there's power in the process. Yes. And the process not only leads you to perhaps a compelling vision, but your compelling vision is not achieved without a process. And so many people. Even if they have a compelling vision, they end up just talking about it and never getting to work because they don't follow a process. But what you underscored for me is, you know, December 31st, 2018, you embark on a year of process, trusting that that process will lead you to results, even though perhaps you didn't know what those results might be on January 1st, 2019. Yeah. Spot on. Uh, everything you said is I 100% agree with. That's that's what it comes down to. And we we try to know the end result. We always want to know what what's next when we're not fully living in the present of the first step, right, or the tenth step, or whatever it is. So it's a journey. It's a journey, and we have to go through it. And the reality is, we're gonna fail, right? You can't win without losing. It's just you know, it's just part of the deal, you know. So the sooner you understand that things are gonna happen the sooner you can just jump in all, all in and say, you know what? Risk is part of the deal. Failing and losing is part of the deal. Discomfort is part of the deal. So might as well just live in voluntary discomfort. What do you say to somebody who experiences around them resistance for the process that they want to set for themselves, perhaps in relationships, a spouse that says, no, I'm not going to, I don't want you waking up at that hour. I don't want you going to bed at that hour. I don't want you spending that time. How, how do you navigate that with people? Well, first of all, I'm a firm believer that if you want to achieve something, you got to go in the right way, right? It's more how you start and it's only how you end, even though you can end well as well. Um, so for example, when I married my wife, right? Um, I went through a process of vetting <laughs> and I'm sure she did as well. I said, listen, just so you know, I plan to be a multimillionaire. I told her from the very beginning, even though I. Uh, I, I always joke with her. I said, you're marrying me for the future money. Cause when she married me, I was broke. Right. So, <laughs> so, so I said, you know, listen, I'm going to be multimillionaire. I told her, and I, my goal is to have a large, massive organization globally and do a lot of travel. And we're going to live a wonderful lifestyle, but we're also going to impact a lot of people. Right. And create a legacy. Now, you know what that's going to entail. 
I'm going to have to do certain things. I'm not going to, I'm going to have to leave a lot of times blah, blah, blah. and I said all these things and she said, okay, I get that. How comfortable I am with that. Let me find out. So eventually we, she understood and we had an agreement. So I went in with that and that's, and of course it doesn't mean it's going to be that way forever, but that's kind of what it was. But eventually resistance comes and resistance is part of the process, right? And anything. So if you're hitting this kind of hurdle with kids or wife or finances or other things that are giving you pushback, I always say winners find a way to win. Winners find a way to win and you can't get stuck in the, what's in front of you, right? Walk by faith and not by sight. Sometimes you got to go around. Sometimes you got to go under, over, or sometimes you got to go right through the problem. No, you know, but there is a way to get it done. So resistance is part of the key. And so many people lack resourcefulness, right? They're just like, oh, I don't have the money. Oh, I don't have the time. I don't have the support. I don't have somebody who believes in me. I don't have this. Listen, it's not about what you have. It's your ability to be resourceful. Yeah, figure yeah. it out. Figure it out. Everything is figure outable. That's a good book uh, from some, I forgot where she's, where she's, her name is too, but, yeah, but right. that's what I would say. That's what I would say. And I think sometimes, uh, we don't rely enough on the smart people around us. We stay locked in our heads, particularly as maybe entrepreneurs who come at our visions as though we are some, uh, wise Gandalf of our vision holder of all things good. And instead of, uh, instead of understanding that that journey is going to take all of the people around us. And sometimes we're going to need to open ourselves to input and where we are weak, perhaps another person is strong around us. Yeah, no, it's iron sharpens iron, right? A lot of times. And then sometimes it's somebody's pulling you up or you're pulling somebody up, right? There's different times and different seasons for all that stuff. And you got to be willing to be everything. Sometimes, sometimes you just got to pull yourself up. You know, so many people are waiting for somebody to believe in them or give them permission to succeed and, and do what needs to be done. You know, you got to look at the end of your own arm. Mm. You got to just say, you know what? I can do this. I can roll my sleeves up and get the job done. You got to just get out on the field. And sometimes in life, if you're going to, you know, walk through a minefield, follow somebody, right? Just ask yourself, who is where I want to be? What did they do? How can I serve you so that I can learn from you so that I can emulate what you've done? Let me ask you the appropriate questions. I can't tell you how many people I've, I've hung out with that are at a certain level in business and they're trying to get to a certain level and we're hanging out and they will spend their time talking about how nice this car is or this and this and they'll tell me all kinds of things but they won't ask me powerful questions that i would be have more than happy to answer right um and i learned that from a mentor i, I used to be an amway back in the day it was like when i was like 17 that was my first i wasn't even legally allowed to be an amway but i was an amway um quick star i guess it was at the time for like 10 years and I was a platinum and I was around multimillionaires and that's kind of where I started getting the appropriate brainwashing that I needed. You know, and my, my brother was like, you're getting brainwashed. I'm like, well, some of us need it. Right. So yeah. I, I learned a lot of cool things there and I was uh, driving up and down to North Carolina to go to Paul Miller's house, which multimillionaire guy. And the guy I was with is a millionaire himself and uh, Chris Shuresh, shout out to Chris Shuresh. And we were in the car and he said, Jose, listen, you have me in the car here for eight hours each way. And we've already spent four hours and you haven't asked me a single question that's worthwhile. And he's like, not to be rude, but let me just give you some mentorship. If you have me in the car, you should have a tape recorder. You should hit record and you should be asking me all kinds of questions on the way there and on the way back. And then you go back and you listen to those answers and then you take notes on them. And then you ask me, what would you say if somebody says this? And then I will give you the script of what to say. And then you regurgitate and you practice over and over and over until you have it memorized and you create your own twist on it. And I learned that and I was like, wow. So anyways, I said all that to say that, you know, at the very least, if you want to keep your dream alive, hang around dreamers. <laughs> if you want to increase to the next level, get around people that are at that level and ask yourself, how can you get into their world? So it's mutually beneficial. Maybe you should carry their bags on a golf course, or maybe you can buy them a drink or invite them to dinner or whatever it is. Right. But just find three to six successful people and get in, in their circle and find a way to add value to them and they can add value to you. And that's kind of how you do it. Yeah. So I, I have a, I thought of a question, um, Jose, the, the benefit of over a decade of friendship, um, enables you and I to ask each other these sorts of questions, but it's your turn to answer since you're the guest. 
um, speaking in the context of winning the day, but measuring in the decade, right? What is, um, when you think back to our poolside conversation in Orlando, what are some of your favorite things? Maybe could be two or three, could be many more than that, but in the interest of time, just a handful of things that you would say, you know, when you and I were sitting by that poolside, that wasn't on my radar. I didn't think it was possible. I didn't think it was even, you know, it, you know, in the cards for me, I'd written it off. I'd given up whatever. And now here you are, right? You've done all this work. You've come all this way. And here we are sitting on the, on the emissary authors podcast. Um, what has winning the day led to for you today that was nowhere near your radar when you and I were sitting by that pool? Uh, I always thought I would be financially successful in business. So uh, even though I wasn't, but I just knew it, I just had this thing inside of me. I was like, I'm going to figure that out. Right. I was, I was like uh, the guy who was like, uh, dating a lot, but I wasn't necessarily serious about relationships. So I knew I could eventually get married. My parents have been married for going on 50 years at the end of this year. So I knew I had the appropriate examples I needed and, uh, to find a wife and to be a good husband. And the list goes on. I, I had just general, I was always a positive guy. I have a positive outlook on in life in general, but I always had the fear of being a good father. Hey. And me, that was the biggest thing where I was like, I don't know if I have that in me because I'm a well character. You know, I mean, you knew that back then. <laughs> yep. I have quite a past of just, you know, losing my way for, for quite some time, just having fun and not be, being serious about anything. And, um, <clears throat> for a leader though, for the good and the bad, you know, and I prefer the good. So. So I said, I just don't know if I could uh, be a good dad, if I have what it takes to do that. And that was my biggest thing. And looking back now in retrospect, 10 years later, I'm a phenomenal father. Yeah. Phenomenal father. I'm very much involved with my kids. Um, I have five, all age brackets and, um, and we're blessed. And, and, and how did that start from this? Because this forced me to create the time for the things that matter. Yeah. It forced me to learn about being a good father. It forced me to pick up books on fatherhood. It, it forced me to listen to podcasts. It gave me the time. And, and then I said, okay, well, in my calendar right now, if you look, I put my faith first, my family second, and then I put my business, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people say, well, if I have time, I'll spend time with my kids after my day. I don't do that. I do it the other way around, you know? So, and, and that has allowed me to, to really create a, a life that, that is, is really just exciting. And, and that goes back to how you start your day and how you end your day. They're interconnected, right? And uh, I go to bed excited and wake up excited. And that's what it's all about. And I want to make sure that my kids at all times are uh, finding new ways. I'm always like, what can I do now? Like, I want them to catch me in the act of excellence as often as possible. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. Well said. Well, those are some fantastic insights not only into the topics that are in your book, but also into your own life and how these, how you came to these insights, how you, uh, maybe took maybe to your own, I can't remember what exactly the words were you used, but you know, your life of kind of doing whatever you want and having a great time. Uh, and with whatever gusto you pursued that you've now pursued the, the, uh, systematic structure of achieving great things. And I love, I love what you ended there with, which is, uh, catch somebody in the act of excellence and to, to have your children or have it in your mind that have your children do that, uh, with you, that's a pretty high bar. So winning the day, uh, how can somebody pick up a copy of that? So the, the website winning the day book dot com so www.winningtheday just add the word book at the end winningthedaybook.com that's where you can get signed personalized copies from me it's available on amazon as well but it's actually slightly more expensive on amazon so if you get it from me directly it's a little bit less expensive and you get a signed copy um, and then for people who are out there who are thinking i don't have time to read you know how many times i hear that all the time i don't have the time to read i say baloney i say we all have the time the difference is that it's not a priority for you. Yeah. Right? So if we just make reading a priority and where can you find the time to read? First of all, you don't find that you create it, right? You create time to read and you, and where do you create the time in the nooks and crannies of your day? 
where do you find spare change in your car, right? In between the seats and the nooks and crannies, same concept in your day, right? Everybody can find an hour a day. I can guarantee everybody can find an hour a day each day to read a book. And if you're out there and you want to write a book, guess what? Nooks and crannies, bookends of your day. Start, start and create the time from the top. And then you find you know, whatever else is left, this is left, right? But prioritize things. Yeah, that's great. Good words on which to conclude our, uh, our time today on the Emissary Author podcast with my old friend, Jose Escobar, founder of Connected Leaders Academy and author of Winning the Day. My name is Paul Edwards. Jason Todd is my co-host. Jose, it's been great having you on the show. Would love to have you, love to have you back again sometime soon, my friend. I would love to be back. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it.